This is Official Nerd Business. Hello nerd boys and girls, welcome back to our programming series where we take down Euler challenges. Today we'll be taking a look at Euler problem 11. Largest product in a grid. As you can see I have down, uh, downloaded, I have uh, copied and inserted the um, description into its own Euler file, a uh, python file called Euler11. Um, contrary to my usual approach I already have the entire solution worked out in this file which is available on my github link in the description. I will be walking you through it, I will not be typing it out because it is a large, uh, very big program to program. Um, so I'll just be uh, taking a look at my solution. So here's the description, largest product in the grid. In the 20 by 20 grid below, four numbers along a diagonal line have been marked red. Uh, I have obviously lost the color, but suffice to say there are four marked in red on the project or their website. The product of these numbers is 26 times 63 times 78 times another 14 is this number here. What's the greatest product of four adjacent numbers in the same direction? Up, down, left, right or diagonally and note that the diagonals go two ways. You can have a diagonal like this and you can have a diagonal like this. So we need to find a um, four adjacent numbers that make up the biggest product. As you might see from the description, this is not a problem that requires a ton of math. Mathematically, this one is just multiplying four numbers. Um, the problem on this challenge is actually doing it, actually writing a program that processes this. So let's have a look at how we did things. Uh, as you can see, I have all the, the boilerplate code that I usually have. So the description is up top in the doc string. Uh, with the definition for uh, the one parameter that we're taking here. Uh, the grid is part of the uh, program itself. But how big of a... how many numbers we're gonna uh, uh, get together to multiply that's a parameter. Its default value is 4. And then all the way down in this file we have the um, Kickstarter for when this file is run on its own the function that is called either from here or from uh, the Euler host program that we will be running a little later on to get timing information. Then attempt number one, um, which is uh, the only attempt we will be taking at this. And attempt number one does a couple of things, we'll be stepping through it in a second. And then there's a couple more functions that do um, tiny bits of the process for us um, and I will now describe the process itself for you um, note that I've also added a lot of comments to this code to describe what's happening at every step of the process um, there's, there's several ways when you look at this grid there's several ways uh, in which you could tackle it you could build up a store of all the products um, taking these four numbers, then skipping one ahead, taking these four numbers, etc. And then you could do the same for the columns and the diagonals. I've chosen to do this a little bit differently. Um, when this program runs, it takes a, uh, a slice of four by four numbers. Um, so if I align the first number uh, with the rest, then uh, these four numbers will be a row in my new slice plus uh, this part of the row below it plus this um, plus this uh, and then uh, that's one slice then we will take the next slice which is this and this etc until we are at the end here taking uh, excuse me oh, these four numbers plus these plus these plus these and then we um, do the process all over again but one row lower so then this will be the first row of our uh, slice with this, 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 etc. until we uh, finally have a 4x4 four four grid up here. And with every slice we get we will check what all of the multiples are uh, on the rows, on the columns and on both diagonals and then take the maximum from those, compare it to the maximum we had standing and etc. 
Um, so we will be doing, uh, we will be taking sub-slices and then process all the multiples off of one sub-slice and then compare uh, those multiples to whatever multiples we had from our previous slices. That's the, the general gist. Um, getting those slices and um, running through one slice to get all of the, uh, uh, the products in there, that's a bit of a, uh, involved programming, kind of complex programming, um, but mathematically there's really nothing to this challenge. So how does it look programmatically when we use Python? First off we get the big grid as one string and we want a two-dimensional array so that is an array of which each element in that one array is another list, another array with in that array the actual elements uh, for one row. Then the next element in the base array is another array with the, all of the numbers on the second row, then we have another element in that array with all the numbers on the third row, etc. 20 rows deep. And each of those subarrays will have 20 elements containing the actual data. But first we would need to convert this one string into that two-dimensional array. Step one is here, in which we split off um, every single row on new line characters, split up the rows again by the spaces, uh, that's this step, comments are for uh, the step below. So we will eventually have an array which holds an array which has all of the numbers. So here we split up uh, the the array in uh, or the string into one array with uh, 20 strings, substrings, uh, and here we split up each of those strings. This returns an array, and we build up a list of arrays out of whatever is currently in here by splitting the row of spaces. So this gives us our two dimensional array. Then we get a collection of subgrids we take all possible subgrids and if we take a look at how big this is and the fact that we want to take four um, with a four and a height of four then there are 17 unique subgrids we can take from this uh, the one starting at 8, at 2, at 22 etc until we are um, at 50 and since this is 20 rows big and we don't want to take um, chunks off of the last three numbers, that's 17 subgrids per, uh, it's 17 subgrids wide and since it's 20 by 20 it's also 17 subgrids deep, giving us a total of 289 subgrids, 17 by 17. And uh, let's have a look at the function that does the, uh, the chopping. So it takes the full grid as the first parameter, then it takes a parameter for width and height. These can be controlled individually, but both will be set to uh, 4 in this instance. And overlap is set to true. I've added a description of what each of these parameters does, and specifically the overlap. Uh, with the overlap parameter we can specify whether we want, um, if we take a chunk of 8, 2, 22 and 9, 7, if the next chunk starts at the 38. So it takes a completely clean new slice of n by n, but 4 by 4, so for instance, in, the, in this case. Uh, or if we want to start it at 2 and have a slice that is 75% equal to our last slice and only varies on the last row included. Uh, in this case, we want to test every possible slice in here and not every clean slice, um, so that that's why overlap is true. Um, overlap in this case means that uh, the same number can be tested up to three or four, four times. Can, can, uh, the same coordinate can appear in four different slices or um, in fact in a lot more because it moves in both the rows and the columns direction. This number will be tested a lot of times. Um, but each time the the resulting product might be different because the first time this number was not included and the second time it was, etc. Uh, that's why we want the overlap to be true in, in this case. I've set this up uh, so that it's kind of flexible. 
if we get another uh, challenge using these kinds of grids and we need to slice it up then we can copy this into or move this into uh, our um, general library the Euler library and uh, then we can work with this a little bit more uh, makes the function a little bit more versatile a little bit more usable so that's in here um, Here's the bit that does the actual slicing. It creates one subgrid, and the uh, subgrid uh, makes a collection of rows. And the rows are uh, based on a certain um, uh, y coordinate. So it, it, it picks a starting row, and it takes from that starting row, uh, x number of rows equal to the height that we've specified here. And from that subcollection, it takes uh, several elements starting at a certain column, x coordinate, and then taking some number of elements defined by the width here. So basically, this uses a lot of uh, the Python. Um, list indexing functions so if we have any uh, type of list we can then specify uh, that we want to take a sublist out of this by uh, by stating the starting index uh, the ending index and um, perhaps any um, step size we've used this a couple of times but this is I guess the most involved use we had uh, for it um, so yeah, this this really just slices out a subcollection from the 2D array using uh, a very Pythonic formulation, um, and it does so um, nearly 290 times because the starting indexes move up uh, one space every uh, every time based on this value, and this value is based on the overlap. So this is either the width that we specified, so four in this case, or one if we if we do want overlap. So this just keeps the increment down to one, and and generates 17 slices per row and per column because it's, it's functionally nearly identical, just looking at the height instead of the width. Um, so those are the the increment sizes here, which I could have just inlined, but I think this is more clear uh, for now. Uh, there's some off by one correction uh, code in here to s make it stop taking slices when we can't take a full slice anymore. So this makes it run only up to row and, and column number 17 and not beyond it. So not giving us a 3x4 or a 3x3 three three or a 1x1 one one slice and that, that we don't want to test anyways. So that's the bit that stops taking the wrong sort of slices and, and then it uh, it makes that sub collection and adds it to its own collection of slices and eventually it, this will return all 289 combinations. So that's what's happening if we go back to our attempt. Uh, that's what's happening excuse me, over here. Then we need a variable to keep track of the maximum product we found and we need to start looking at those products. Uh, for that we have another function, so this takes a subgrid, or it takes any grid really, but uh, in this case we are feeding it the, uh, the subgrids one by one for S in subgrids, so this takes, first this takes the, uh, the subgrid uh, A2, up to here, and then it takes the subgrid 2, 22, etc. One by one these are fed into the max product on grid. Uh, as you can tell from the name, it looks for the maximum product on the grid in any direction. Um, and it returns that one single value. We call it n for the moment. And if n is bigger than the total we currently have, which obviously will be true for our first grid, and then uh, we'll need to check it, um, then we increase or we uh, set the value to whatever we found as a maximum product on this particular subgrid. 
eventually the highest value is returned. So for processing a subgrid, we have the max product on grid function. Once again, it has a nice description. It stores all the results and we'll see what this does in a second. Um, for the rows, it isn't very hard. Um, the rows are actually and, uh, the arrays on the second level of the master array. So we once again, we have a 2D array here which is one array consisting of list elements and each one of those list elements is one flat row on the uh, subgrid. So we simply make a product of them. Um, note that I have a separate function for this. There's a sum function for lists, but there isn't a product function for lists. So I've created my own, um, which does some nifty things. Note that at this point we are still working with um, strings. The data element in the um, the data element in our 2d array so the actual data is strings and those strings have uh, if, if we take a look at the grid those might be uh, the value 2 but with prepending zeros and python doesn't really take kindly to those converting strings to numbers with a preceding zero um, so this function, from whatever list it takes, it makes sure that all of the elements on it are actually numbers. So it maps the int function, if we, if we have a string, and we want to convert it to a, uh, to a number, we could say this, or even this. Um, the string o2 will be converted to an integer and assigned to the value i. And this is applying a function to a string, and we can, if we have a list, oh, apparently I took these out. Uh, if we have a list, we can apply some sort of function to every element of that list by mapping it. So this creates a new list um, by running this function over every element of this list, guaranteeing that we have integers or this errors out because there's a character value that cannot be readily converted into integer. Then we assign that to uh, just the base parameter again, because we don't need the original string list anymore. Then we do a simple check. Uh, we're going to multiply all of the numbers together. If there is any zero element in it, then the product will be zero, and we don't have to calculate anything, so we can just return zero. Then, if we survive the zero check, apparently we have something that we do want to calculate. Um, we get a base value of 1 and we simply multiply each element in the list with our running total giving us a total product for whatever is on this list. So that's returned here and appended to the results. Eventually we will return the uh, maximum from these results if we did add things to it. There's a uh, little safety precaution because running max on an empty list is something that will throw an error in Python. Um, and working with uh, products, it is not uncommon to return a 1 on an empty set instead of a 0. But this case will either never trigger, or when it does trigger, it will be of no consequence, because some of our other 290 slices will certainly have a bigger value than 1, therefore this is not significant for the end result. Um, so that's for the rows. Then we take the diagonals, and there's a little trick to this. Um, we get the length of the first row, since we are working with square grids here, this works out. And then we take every uh, element at the i and i position. Um, so at the, uh, at the first iteration this takes the element at 0, 0, then it takes the element at 1, 1, then it takes the element at 2, 2, and then the element at 3, 3 from our two-dimensional array. So it draws a diagonal. And by um, taking the length of that row and subtracting i from it, we run the other way. And again, a uh, off by 1 correction. Um, so we would get 4 minus 0 minus 1 is 3. So from the first row we would retrieve uh, 0, 3, and then 1, 2, then 2, 1, and then 3, 0. 
running the diagonal in the other way. Um, these are all stored in temp, so this list will eventually have eight elements, which are then fed into the uh, product of list function, though not all eight at the same time. Once again, using the list indexing, we create a uh, two offset lists, one containing every second element starting from the zeroth from the first element and one starting from the second element which is indicated by the one so this eats all the even elements and this all the odd elements and since we added all the products or all the uh, components of the product we want to uh, multiply out uh, since we've added them two at a time each odd numbered element will be from one diagonal and each even numbered element will be from the other or vice versa um, Depending on whether or not you look at this, uh, one or zero indexed. Obviously, lists are technically zero indexed, so there you are. So that gives us all the information on the diagonals and on the rows, then the columns. And here is a very nifty function when looking at lists, specifically when looking at 2D lists. Uh, we can shift or uh, rotate the grid so that our columns become our rows and our rows become our columns using the zip function. Uh, what zip does, zip takes a number of arguments and then um, since this is a list of lists that going in here, the grid, um, it will uh, create a new grid, a new 2D array um, where it has uh, looked at all the rows and then creates a new row selecting every zeroth element on each subsequent row. So the, the first number will stay in place, but the second number will become the first number on the second row. Then the third number will become the first number on the third row, etc. Uh, shifting rows and columns. So now that we have shifted our rows and our columns, we can simply uh, do the exact same thing as we did for our rows to get all of the products on the columns and eventually we return the maximum value. So there we have it. That's um, computationally a pretty hard problem. Um, you need to know a lot of things about uh, how Python works with lists to, to make this even a, a remotely elegant uh, solution. Um, personally, I'm uh, quite happy with the way we take subreds using these list index uh, and, and slicing functions. I will put a link to a specific article about list slicing up in the description because it, it does deserve its own uh, bit of attention. It's a very powerful feature in, um, in Python. Um, so now that we've discussed everything, let's see if we can run it. I'm going to open mainpy and run this. We will want problem 11. I will leave in the base value of 4. It is incredibly quick. Though 300 um, times 8. It's, it, it's not many calculations that it actually, actually has to do. And this number is correct. Spoiler alert. If you enter this over at projectoiler.net you will get a green check mark for problem number 11. So there it is. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I know I have finding something of an elegant solution to this was really the trick. Mathematically it's not very interesting but I do think this problem excels in having us look at how lists work in our given programming environment, in this case Python. I will see you next time for problem number 12. Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.